Hello and welcome to this quick video on the QLA tool. Let's start off by thinking about why we need it. You may have done a pre-test, a homework or end of topic test and need to generate an overview screen uh, that highlights all of the collective strengths and areas to develop. What we would then want to do is then generate a personalized feedback form for every single student. Now the workflow of using the QLA tool on the Maths Whiteboard site uh, can be broken down in one of two ways. Either you're going to be using one of the pre-existing topic tests and templates that are available on the site, or you're going to have created your own assessment and need to create a template that then collates all the data. So let's think about these two workflows. Um, first of all, we're going to download and deliver the topic test by selecting the button highlighted. Uh, we're going to use the answer sheet that's provided in the topic test to then mark the work. We're then going to submit the template to the students so that they can enter in their own data. Uh, and then finally, using all of that information that we've uh, accumulated, we can then download a report that summarizes the accumulated data and also an Excel spreadsheet of that data. So what does, that, what does this look like in practice? Okay, so on the left, I'm gonna have the teacher view and on the right, I'm gonna have a student screen in the moment. So on the teacher screen, just scroll down uh, to get to the QLA tool. Now there are three ways for a student to be able to access the tool. The, one of them is through a link that I can share with the students. Another is through the QR code uh, that they can scan using their device's camera. And then the third way is through a website with the class code itself. Uh, so I'm just gonna copy the link and I'm going to paste it into the student browser. And the first thing that a student will need to do is enter in their forename and then surname initial uh, and click submit. Now it says that they've successfully signed in and they're currently waiting for a template. Now within the teacher view, um, we can scroll down to where all the templates exist. And here we've got a list of templates that staff have created in other schools. Um, but if I think that I've just done uh, a topic test on expanding over a single uh, bracket. Now the topic test itself is found here. You can produce a topic test and every time you click on this, uh, it will generate a brand new assessment for you with the same skills. So if you did a pre-test, post-test um, kind of model in your school, then you can actually have a very easy pre-test, post-test generated by the Maths Whiteboard site. So I wanna submit this to the students uh, and if I click on that, You'll notice on the right hand side, we've then got um, my performer that the students then need to fill in. Now with the topic test, questions one to five was assessing uh, multiplying single positive term over a bracket. And I would simply, as a student, start entering in how many marks I got for each of the different question sets. So uh, for, for instance, I got four marks, five marks. Uh, and then what if I made a mistake? Now, straight away, you can see that this cell has not rag rated, it's gone purple, uh, and it clearly indicates that it's entered in more than the number of marks available. So then I can uh, correct it, uh, and I've got one mark, one mark, and then no marks for the last question. Now, as I was entering this information in, as you can kind of see on this teacher view, this was getting collated uh, as and when I was t leaving the text box on the student screen. Now, I've finished collating all of the information, um, I can kill the student link and maybe there was a student who wasn't available today that I need to add in. So I'm going to click on add a pupil uh, and I can type in their forename and for, um, surname initial. Um, using the text boxes I can then enter in their data and I'm just simply selecting tab in order to jump to the next cell. So it works very much like an Excel spreadsheet um, and there we go, we've got all of the information from that assessment now in the system. What I can then do is generate a personalized report for every single student, clicking on the PDF. You can now see it's successfully summarized the information from that assessment. So we've got for Matt W, all of the information that he's entered in, uh, and then more importantly, for any skills that uh, Matt was not so great on, it's then uh, picked out a feed forward question for him. Same thing if I scroll down to Nat W, um, she found obviously multiplying harder single positive term over a bracket uh, slightly more tricky. So it's picked out that as being an area of improvement. Generally, anything that is either amber or red, it will highlight as being an area of improvement. So with potentially 32 kids in a class, uh, each student will have their own areas of 
development. And the important thing is that with the this test, there were six different skills. So it's actually created six different feed forward questions, one for each particular skill. So that makes marking it slightly easier. And if I scroll all the way to the last page, it then summarizes what the feed forward question was for a particular skill. And then it also gives you the answer alongside. So if you were marking this as a whole class, it would be really, really straightforward to be able to do. The Excel spreadsheet, on the other hand, what it does is it generates kind of like the Covey board of all of the information just within one spreadsheet. So this information is incredibly powerful because now I know uh, what skills I might need to work on in future lessons um, and it will help with forward planning. So what if you've created your own assessment and need to generate a template? Well, this assessment itself could be generated by the Mass Whiteboard site worksheet generator or some third party software. Now the template itself is super easy to generate and as soon as you've got your template what you're then going to be doing is submitting the template to the students uh, and then downloading the summary sheet just like before. So let's take a look at this workflow. So back on the QLA homepage, uh, if I just scroll down to where we've got all of the templates uh, you'll notice that it's got create a new template. Now clicking this it will bring up a performer that you'll need to fill in. You'll need to provide a title, so in this case I'll just call this one example higher test. Uh, select an exam board and then also uh, a relevant year, so I, I'm doing this for a year 9 group. Now just underneath there is a password field, uh, so it could be that I'm just going to call this one topic test or uh, TT and then put some numbers on the end, um, just so that it's an eight digit um, password to protect this template, so that if you want to delete it, edit it in a future um, case, then you'll need to provide this password in order to be able to uh, make those amendments. If you also provide a email address, it will then uh, send you a copy of the password and also the te template heading so that you know which password relates to a particular template. That way you've got it for future purposes. Um, moving on to the template itself then, if we click on add a new question. Um, so the test itself was a fairly straightforward one. Um, so I could put in here question 1A, uh, question 1 and 2, I could put any uh, combination of skills uh, or question numbers in this box. Um, now if we then go on to um, the number of marks, uh, so this was a 4 mark question, I've then got the option of either writing down what the skill was and or linking it to a math whiteboard skill itself. Now, if I happen to uh, mention the fact that it was uh, to be able to create and solve uh, an equation, um, this may not necessarily be a skill within the math whiteboard uh, question bank as it stands. So one of the things I can do is uh, on the feed forward material, it will state that this is the skill that's being assessed. But if I then happen to write down any particular skill from the mass whiteboard, so let's just see what comes up. So I'm going to create, uh, and there isn't a create and solve question there, but there is a create a simple expression uh, question, in which case it will write this as being the skill, and then this one as being uh, the feed forward question that will be then generated. So it won't necessarily correlate. However, if I remove this, um, then what will happen is it will use form expressions and equations, create a simple expression as the skill heading, uh, and then it will use this uh, in order to generate a feed forward question. If I only provided one and not the other, um, so in other words, if I didn't provide um, a feed forward question, then it would simply produce this as being the skill and then there'd be no feed forward question for this and I hope that makes sense. Uh, now I can add as many questions as I like, uh, so it'll be question 3 and uh, let's put 4 and 5 uh, and this was a 3 marks altogether. and this one I'll just put the MWB question bank um, skill, so this one was to solve and let's put the fact that this was a solve with unknowns on both sides. Okay, so it was a really simple topic test that I did on this one. Uh, and then I just simply click save. Now, when I come to 
the list of templates, you'll notice that all of these have the uh, bin and also an edit symbol. So if at any point I want to edit the template that I've created, then I can click on this and you'll notice that it comes up with password field and this will be the same as the one that was specified when you first created it. If I go to delete a, a particular template, um, it will again, it will ask me for that same password uh, before it is then removed. Now one thing to uh, quickly mention is that the life of the data that is currently on screen uh, exists for the life of the room code and that's typically about 48 hours. So make sure that you may, uh, download your PDF and Excel spreadsheet uh, as soon as you've finished because as soon as you've closed down the window this data will typically be um, very difficult to get back unless you happen to have a link to the page. In which case, again, it will be um, available for roughly 48 hours. So although this video has taken roughly 11 minutes of your time, I'm hoping you can see the benefits of using this tool because it will give you so much information back and more importantly, save you so much more time in the future. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you've got any feedback, then please do leave it um, on Twitter or send me an email at matt at mathswhiteboard.com.